For lovers and fighters alike, there's no place like home. And Norfolk's Pernell Whitaker will certainly attest to that. Once again, the undisputed lightweight champion of the world has taken his show off the main road into his backyard. So close friends and family can catch his act up close and personal. Uh -huh. yeah. Whitaker's life has become a crusade to serve as a good example. And when the opportunity has come his way, he's always given his hometown fans something to cheer about. Whitaker senses a strong commitment to his roots. To many of Norfolk's youngsters, he is the embodiment of the better way. What can be achieved if you pursue a dream? For Whitaker, the dream was to become a champion and the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Purnell may indeed have fulfilled that desire. Tonight, the undisputed world lightweight champion and Norfolk's favorite son, takes to the ring to put his title on the line against a tough opponent, Holy Diaz of Spain. Once again, we are live in Norfolk, Virginia. World Championship Boxing on HBO continues. It is time for the fight for the undisputed lightweight championship of the world between Pernell Whitaker, the champion, and Holy Diaz, the number one challenger. This bout scheduled for 12 rounds of championship action. And you think we've had excitement so far? You ain't seen nothing yet. In a few minutes, a 110-piece marching band is going to bring hometown favorite and world champion Pernell Whitaker into the ring. George Foreman, he's a young man who has been called by many magazines, experts, observers in boxing, the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. What do you think of it? If he can get by Diaz, all this stand-up European fighter type stuff, my foot. This guy is a good boxer. He can move left and right. He's a good puncher. He's got a fight on his hand. If he gets past this guy tonight, Hall of Fame. You saw some signs, however, in Whitaker's last fight against Anthony Jones, a relatively little-known opponent, that he might be slipping backward a little There's bit. There's no doubt in my mind he's not as quick as he was. Maybe he has more power, maybe not, but he's not as fast. His well, feet we're see. just don't move. Well, we're going to see, because tonight he's in there against a guy who it appears to us can sock another relatively unknown opponent, never before seen in the United States, Larry Merchant. Who is Holy Diaz? Well, after watching all those heavy guns <laughs> from those heavyweights, he's a guy with a couple of uh, pistols in his hands, and in fact, like Whitaker, he himself is a pistol in and out of the ring. It's been interesting watching him this week. He sort of charmed us and he's alarmed the Whitaker people a little bit because he hasn't taken a backward step at all in any of the pre-fight confrontations. He's aggravated Whitaker in, in particular, and as well as he might. He had 62 amateur fights, won them all. He's had 32 professional fights, won them all. Why shouldn't he believe he's going to make it 95-0 and 0 <laughs> as, as a fighter? So he's here. He thinks he can win. The question that comes up is, can he fire those pistols fast enough and accurately enough to hit the most elusive target in boxing? All right, you've got a huge contingent of, well, I say huge, it feels <laughs> huge here, about 100 people up in the rafters chanting, poly, poly, poly. The Norfolk State Marching Band is getting ready. Let's ready for the next step in the life of Pernell Whitaker, public figure. The Norfolk, Virginia Beach area boasts the largest naval base in the Western world. This is also the biggest metropolitan region in the United States without a Major League professional franchise. Unless you consider for a moment, boxing's undisputed lightweight champ, Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker. Riding the crest of a genuinely cultivated hometown hero image, Whitaker has established a remarkable following in a transient society that supports roughly 70 home games a year for baseball's Tidewater Tide, the New York Mets AAA affiliate, and in which the Hampton Roads Admirals play 30 home games and this year won the Eastern Continental Hockey League title. Like most towns, Norfolk likes winners, as evidenced when 6,000 plus fans braved the elements in an unprecedented snowstorm two years ago to watch Whitaker overwhelm Greg Haugen for the IBF lightweight title. It's harder for him just in general to to get us to get constant name recognition or at least uh, publicity uh, just because of the few times that he fights. Some of that also goes back to the fact that he keeps his nose fairly clean and, and stays out of trouble and so when he's not fighting he's not in the news either. 
uh, unlike some other boxers. Hey, how y'all doing? All right, good. Good luck. All right, thanks a lot. He hasn't just locked himself in some mansion out on the water. He is the guy that is always there when the local charities need him. He's the guy that's always there when the elementary school calls up and says, we want you to come out and talk about drug abuse, about staying in school. People are just tugging at him right and left, not to mention all the preparation he has now being in the prime of his boxing career. And do you know what? I have never heard the guy say no. It's critical that we have a young man like this, especially a kid that came out of tough environment, tough situation, and uh, while he became successful, he kept the common touch, uh, he kept his grassroots. Sweet Pea is our franchise. He is such a, uh, a good ambassador in the sense that he brags and boasts and says awfully good things about his hometown and his home area everywhere he goes, and so he's, he's a tremendous value to us. With the value his townspeople place on him, Whitaker understands the responsibilities of a world-class athlete totally committed to his craft. But more impressively, he refuses to exercise an option most other boxing mercenaries couldn't resist. Let's face it, everybody knows he can make a lot more money fighting in Atlantic City, or fighting in Las Vegas, or fighting in Madison Square Gardens. But Pete feels that it's important to him to give this community a chance to see a championship fight. Everyone can't afford a $250 ticket or $100 ticket. So $20, $30, and $40, they can afford that and everybody will fill the scope up. So that's, that's sort of like giving back and they, they respect that and they look forward to that. Because once they hear that, oh sweet, oh Pernell, he cut the prices for us so we can have the opportunity to come. That's so, that's giving back. And that's what I've done. Giving back is the way it's done here. Recently, people honored the returning Desert Storm naval troops who served in the Persian Gulf. The locals are proud of their heroes, most particularly Navy pilot and former Iraqi prisoner of war, Lieutenant Jeffrey Zahn. But with most of the military home now, it's time for Purnell Sweet P. Whitaker's latest homecoming. It's been a while. He's ready. And by the way, who says you can't go home again? I'm looking forward to because it it's always exciting. I haven't been back in two years, so I know these, that, you know, two years, I've, I've grown in two years, and I've matured in, in the last two years. So when they get a chance to come out and see a Pernell Whitaker show, I like, the, I like the show to be special. Coming up, live on HBO Sports, the World Lightweight Championship bout between Pernell Whitaker and Poli Diaz. 12 rounds of boxing action from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia, Pernell Whitaker's hometown. A little bit earlier this evening, Holy Diaz complained to scope officials when he came here and discovered that he was sharing his dressing quarters with some of the fighters on the undercard. While they prepared a personal dressing room for him, he came into the arena and introduced himself early to thousands of fans who are waiting to see him. Here he comes now, the number one ranked WBA lightweight contender, and he is as effusive and outgoing a personality as can be found anywhere in the sport, Larry. Okay. He backs it up by being the best he can be. Very well conditioned athlete. Bought a home in the mountains outside of Madrid. Runs a mile up the mountain to finish off his training every day. He says he's been training for this fight for four years. And to help make him feel at home here in Whitaker's home, there is a contingent upstairs in the rafters. I'm gonna look at them and guess somewhere between 100 and 200 fans waving a Spanish flag, jumping up and down, even now amid the din, chanting, holy, 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 and look at their star, a wild man. When he won the Spanish championship, he won it in the other guy's hometown. When he won the European championship, he won it in Italy. So coming into the other guy's place doesn't seem to intimidate him. Holy Diaz, 32 and 0 with 21 knockouts. He claims that he was 62 and 0 as an amateur. We can't substantiate that. And if you take him at his word, he has never lost a fight. Did somebody just score a touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Larry. We 
て Norfolk State University Martin Spartan Legion. The name of the song, if you want to call it that, that they are playing is Behold the Green and Gold. 110 members recruited from among alumni and active band members because school is not in session at this time. Here they come. This time, Pernell Whitaker made sure that his fight wouldn't be an anti-climax as, as it was after the Camacho-Haugen fight, because he's got a hell of an act to follow. Indeed he does. <laughs> and while the band is doing this, Holy Diaz is walking around the ring with a Spanish flag trailing him, blowing kisses to the audience. Somehow this reminds me of Zaire. <laughs> oh my I, goodness. I the tell you, George, when, he, drum, go, when he goes drums. back home, all those people in Spain are gonna say, wow, they really make an event out of boxing in America. <laughs> <laughs> George Foreman making reference to autumn 1974 in Zaire, the worst night of your life. When you watch Diaz, you sit up there and wonder, man, what are they trying to do to me? Here are the drums, here's the marching. Am I at home or not? It scares starts you. starts to chant, Ali Boumaye, you're in trouble That's again. when Diaz may jump out of, jump out of the ring. This is the equivalent of a Fifth Avenue parade. The familiar figure of Lou Duba. Behind him, Whitaker, shrouded in royal blue. was to Jose Luis Ramirez of Mexico in Paris, France in 1988. He avenged that loss one year later here in Narpa. Otherwise, 24 victories, 13 KOs. And so we take you to the tail of the tape and you will see that Whitaker weighed in right at the limit. Diaz was a little light. Surprising because Poli Diaz, Larry Merchant, 
is as deep-chested and muscular a lightweight as we've ever seen. Yeah, he looks like a welterweight from the chest up. Punch that numbers, Larry. It's hard to know what to make of these numbers. Whitaker is the more active fighter, but basically we don't know the opposition that Diaz has faced, what caliber it was, what any of this means. He does throw a lot of hard punches as the jab totals will show. There they are, you see that Diaz doesn't use the jab very much at all. For Whitaker, it is a principal weapon. Harold Letterman with the rules. Well, Paulie Diaz and Pernell Whitaker are gonna fight under the rules of the World Boxing Association. Three judges will score the fight on a 10 point must system. No standing eight count, three knockdowns and any one round will, will end the fight. And you can be saved by the bell in the last round only. And the only ones that can stop the fight are the referee and commissioner uh. Doug Beavers, but not the doctor. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, main events monitor in association with the undisputed King of Beer, Budweiser, presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is approved by the Virginia State Athletic Commission, Boxing Commissioner Doug Beavers. It is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee, represented at ringside by Bill Brennan, the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, represented by Hector Garcia. The rules and regulations of the World Boxing Association will be in effect President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Ringside, Jorge Clee. All the officials from the state of Virginia will remain the same. The judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Sheila Harmon Martin from the United States, Julio Roldan from Venezuela, and Viva Exton, also from the United States. The man in charge of the action in the ring at this time is referee Al Rothenberg from the state of Virginia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Norfolk, Virginia's famous Scope Arena, let's get ready to rumble! Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim and weighing in, at 133 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, an unbelievable 32 and 0 with 21 KOs. Damas y caballeros de Palomeras, España, el número uno rival del mundo, Poli And across the ring in the blue corner, Wearing the blue trunks with white trim, weighing an even 135 pounds. This 1984 Olympic gold medal champion has a professional record of 25 victories, only one defeat, 13 KO from Norfolk, Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, the undisputed, lightweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. Gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. All I'm going to do is emphasize what I said before. You must obey all my commands. That's all I'm going to tell you. Touch gloves now. Let's have a good fight. Touch gloves. The question, as in any fight with Pernell Whitaker, is can the other guy land enough punches to change the tide of the punch of the fight? Pernell Whitaker is a master at neutralizing and frustrating opponents. Indeed, Cornell sounded like a basketball coach yesterday when he said, my offense comes off of my defense. If my defense is working, I'm going to land punches. The first punches have been thrown, the tension is gone. What an atmosphere, though. Boy, I'm even nervous. Diaz will try to work from side to side to set up counter punches. Whitaker likes to come straight up the middle. Holy Diaz lands the left over the top. 
Whitaker trying to establish the jab early. Whitaker doesn't understand that this guy is quicker than he is. Whole rounds could go by and he would not have landed one shot if he's not careful. Well, it's impossible for Brunel to imagine that he's fighting somebody quicker than himself. So he's he thinking, doesn't believe he's ever been in that situation before. He's thinking he's a big puncher following this guy and losing the round. If you're going to be an aggressor, throw your little punches. What a contrast between the technicianship of Whitaker and the wild swinging of Poli Diaz. And when Whitaker catches him, he's not going to hit him with a dynamically hard punch. So why is he following him he's looking for one good shot? Diaz gets in the right hand twice. A good body punch, a good left to the body by Whitaker. Whitaker trying to stick the jab into Diaz's face. And Diaz counters and comes back with wide lefts and rights, but a couple of them landed again. And the That's judges love it. Whoa. That hurt. Whitaker says that he hurt his left hand against Anthony Jones late in that fight. Didn't seem to use it much in the closing rounds. He has already landed a good punch to Diaz, and it hurt. Straight right hand. Left hand, I'm sorry. Left hand inside to the body. By Burnell Whitaker. Diaz dancing side to side, trying to set up one of those wide swinging right hands. becomes the aggressor as the round comes to a close. Diaz wants to make a brawl out of it. And I thought he won that round. He threw Whitaker off his game. Wait, wait till he throws. Wait till he throws. You work inside, go inside, go at it. Throw your right hand, throw your right hand. Wait till he gets in. When he gets in, he throw your combinations. Points more to the body, but look, don't throw one punch at him. Throw two, three punches at him, but you gotta be close right there. He holds hands up. As always, our Spanish interpreter in Poli Diaz's corner is Ruben Castillo. Neither fighter very accurate in round one. It was a feeling out round. And now the crowd has settled into its seats. Diaz came in lighter, so he'll be able to move a lot longer than Whitaker. Well, this is unorthodox stuff, to say the least. It's not something you spar against or train against. A good right jab by Whitaker. But it's only one jab to 100 shots to by Diaz. Whitaker missed a lot with the jab in round one. Couldn't get close enough to Diaz. And that was a trip. And you're going to see the two fighters get their feet caught with one another a lot. And Al Rothenberg elects to give Diaz a standing eight count. It was on a what knockdown. To us. You think it was a knockdown? It was a knockdown. I think their feet were tied up, George. That too. All right, call it a knockdown officially. Whoa. And now Diaz almost gets one. It's Whitaker. He almost got a knockdown. Yeah, Whitaker had to rely on the ropes to hold him up. Good body punch. Good right hand to the body by Diaz. That hurt. Whitaker's trying to pay him back now. He's and another to... solid right to the body by Diaz. 
who lunges forward and makes it look awkward, but is effective in doing it. Now Whitaker lands a left hand to swat Diaz away as he tries to lunge in again. Great champions, Now Whitaker's moving his legs. Uh, Whitaker trademark coming around from behind his opponent. Diaz didn't like him and whacked him with the left hand. from Pauli Diaz. Diaz is throwing roundhouses. roundhouses. Yeah. He's throwing roundhouses, but they're too quick to get out of the way out. And again, Whitaker almost goes down and uses the ropes to stay up. This is bizarre stuff, George. You would never school a fighter to do this. No. This is not the time to leave your television and go and get a sandwich. <laughs> Diaz is starting to slow down, which is what he does best. When he slows down, he'll counter punch you. Oh, good left hand right from Whitaker. That hurt. Hold it, hold it, hold it. No wrestling, no wrestling. Oh, it. This is a guy with a scalpel fighting a guy with a hammer. The guy with the scalpel is looking for a hammer, someplace to make it a, an even fight. You can't throw so many punches, you've got to wait for him. Throw the right hand. When you get in, when you get, when you get in, throw, throw your punches to the body. You're too far away from him, Paulie. Let's see if that was a real knockdown. That's the punch. That's the punch. I don't think it was a knockdown, George. I think it was a slip. A right-hander against a left-hander. Their, their knees crossed. I don't think the punch did the damage. I agree. George, you still want to call it a knockdown? <laughs> Well, it's that's okay. One, you, you got can, the ref on your side, you George. You can stick by it if you want to. Come on. <laughs> Round three begins. Whitaker ineffective so far with the jab. Only 14 of 58. Let go. Hold it. Let go. Let go. Let go. Hold it. Stop it. A hard shot just one at a time. Why he's doing it, I can't understand. Because he's frustrated already, right? This guy knows, Diaz knows how to move. He's had 30 fights. Whitaker landed a left. Diaz came back with a right of his own. And another. Holy Diaz swinging wildly, but landing to the body and to the head. Those roundhouses are landing on the top of the head. Anything could happen anytime. It's interesting, George, that the guy with the round punches is beating the guy with the straight punches to the punch. Because the round punches are coming quicker. Well, it's almost unbelievable. I mean, if you told the boxing purist what you were seeing and he couldn't see it himself, he would say, no, you can't be seeing it correctly. Whitaker trying to land one hard shot as though he's a big heavyweight. Well, and in doing so, is he abandoning what he does best, George? That's right. He can easily get cut now because he's landing one shot at a time. Look at Whitaker trying to load up the left it, hand. It ain't gonna happen like totally that. Totally uncharacteristic, and Diaz takes advantage by stepping forward and pounding to the body. Bernal Whitaker has forgotten who he is in there. I think we have to remember this, though, Jim and George. Diaz is making him do things he doesn't want to do, and maybe that he can't do. Give Diaz the credit for making him do this hurt. kind of Whitaker stuff. was hurt that time, actually hurt. I got it. Break, break. If Diaz Kona can calm him down and pace him, he can win this thing tonight. Title's going to change hands. Well, it would be one of the biggest upsets in recent years in boxing. Oh, solid uppercut by Whitaker, and that stops Diaz for a second. And Fernell steps forward and lands a right. 
Only one punch at a time, Whitaker. I just spent it. Riddell holding Diaz and pounding low blows and getting away with it. Two in a row below the belt. Al Rothenberg says, don't hold him and hit him. And Whitaker gets away with another low blow. Diaz hasn't complained yet. Right hand from Whitaker landed flush on the jaw of Holy Diaz as they traded punches at the end of the round. Every time you hit the body. How do you feel about it? See how you do stand on top of it? That's all the thing. Just, just walk to him and stand on top of it. You know what I'm saying? Don't reach it. Walk to him with your hands high. And you get close. Cut loose with both hands, right? Because the guy has shit on that side, but you just got to be careful you don't get it from the swing. Right? He's swinging at you. So all you got to do is just get under the swing. Just bend your back, bend your back. Have your hands up good and high. Cut to that body with both hands. You understand? Well, the guy's a piece of shit, really, but he's just a swinger, you know? Now, don't be reaching at him with your jab. Just stick your jab out. Stick your jab out. Two, three jabs, right? Okay. Hey, that body punch, every time you hit him in the body, he can't do nothing, right? Bang that brace. Turn him, turn him. Bang those ribs. Don't pull out. Don't pull out. Right? Yeah, okay, okay. Seconds out. The secret to what Diaz is doing, George, is he doesn't throw just one punch. That's Whitaker right. is waiting for him to stop, but he don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Diaz used the stool for the first time. Well, whether through his own inefficiency or because of the awkwardness of Diaz, Whitaker's main weapon is gone. He landed only two of 20 jabs in round number three. For the moment, it appears he's going to have to find another way to break down Poli Diaz's defense. George Benton, his trainer, advised him to duck under those wild swings and throw punches to the body. Let's see if he can do it. Whitaker, as was the case in his last fight against Anthony Baby Jones, George, looks a little flat-footed, not using the great speed and footwork that typified his earlier career. No longer has footwork. It's gone. All of this talk about the best fighter pound for pound, sometimes it goes to our head. It leads us to stop developing our talents. Whitaker landed the left, but it wasn't a heavy blow. Diaz doing at least as much damage with his body punches as Whitaker does when he gets one over the top. Where would the footwork have gone, George? Oh, it goes to his head. People are complimenting him a bit too much. Like an artist, sometimes nobody really appreciated. I'm not gonna do it anymore starting to produce bad art. <laughs> Here's another thing, George. Whitaker is in, an, is in a rare position for himself. He That's is the aggressor, because this guy's awkward style. He's not used to fighting in this kind of style. Well, you can create and make this guy come to you. You hit him three times, then you run backwards. As fighters will often do, Pernell Whitaker told us yesterday that he never felt better, never been stronger, never been quicker and more prepared. It does not always look that way tonight. He's been beat by a lesser fighter only because he's doing something he shouldn't do. Look for one knockout shot. Whitaker trading punches with Bully Diaz and taking two heavy shots to the body. For the first time, Diaz has started to hold, so the body punches are starting, are starting to wear him down. That hurt. And you can tell it hurt because Diaz is smiling. Get him up, get him up. Referee asks Whitaker to keep him up. Show us your scorecard after four rounds. Well, Jim, I've got it a surprisingly close 38 to 37, two rounds apiece, but uh, one point in favor of Perno Whitaker uh, based on a knockdown in round number two. Uh, Jim, we have four officials in this fight, interestingly enough. Uh, three judges were appointed by the, uh, by the IBF, the WBA, and the WBC. 
Virginia appointed the referee, and surprisingly enough, three out of the four do come from Virginia. So I, I don't know what it's going to be, but that's the story. I didn't give Whitaker an extra point for that knockdown because he didn't do anything the rest of the round. In particular, uh, it was a flash knockdown at best or at worst. Uh, I have it two rounds apiece. Stay there, Pete. Stay there, Pete. Stay there, Pete. Stay there. And punch stat numbers would substantiate both of you on the closeness of the fight. Both fighters have thrown 195 punches through the first four rounds. They have landed 66 for Diaz, 65 for Whitaker. Could hardly be closer. Diaz is starting to coast a little bit. He's resting up for the long haul. Holy Diaz's cornerman asked him between rounds to stay on his toes and keep moving, not to stand still and allow Whitaker to hit him with the left hold like hold that. Grinnell is down for a moment. Well, Al Rothenberg didn't get a call that one a knockdown. Grinnell like, went to the canvas by himself. I like what Diaz did there. Whitaker did one of his acts where he bent all the way down. Diaz I'm just pushed, popped him right on the top I'm of the head. That's when you think the sky is falling. <laughs> Diaz has purposely gone out of his way to fight okay. Southpaws to get ready for the real knockdown. Whitaker a real knockdown. Al Rothenberg is going to call it. Now what is it called a knockdown? Now I want to argue about that one. <laughs> well, it looked that way to us. Almost another real knockdown. Yeah, because Bully Diaz stepped inside of Whitaker's left and pounded a right hand to Whitaker's face. A good body punch. Whitaker's going for a knockout. And Diaz playing a little possum comes back with the right hand. And now they're trading blows to the face. He's hurt. Probably. I think he's right, hurt. Probably the right side of his ribs are broken. We've got a full scale brawl, but you're right. Holy Diaz is in a lot of pain. He's got a broken rib. He's got a broken rib. Whitaker loses his balance for the moment. Well, he's either got a broken rib or he took a whale of a low blow. But the way he's holding his right arm leads you to believe that maybe he has sustained a broken rib. I can tell you one thing. Say, I got it. I'm Stop not a doctor, but I want to go to medicine, medicine school. <laughs> school of medicine right now. Your well, you're pretty good there. on this stuff. Watch your heads. A right and a left for Whitaker landed flush. He has somehow kept the mouthpiece in. You can see that Diaz is in trouble, although he comes forward with the right hand again. Wait, step back, step back, step back, step back. Yeah, I would prescribe, watch your ribs right now. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> what a night! It looks like the six shooters can hit just as hard as those heavy guns. Okay, you have recuperated. Nothing's going to happen. Keep your hands up. He's looking for your ribs. Jab, jab. You got to keep throwing. You got to sit. Here is Cornell Whitaker showing that he can get into a street fight and do damage. And he's doing the damage where his trainer, George Benton, wanted him to do it to the body. But if he doesn't get a knockout, believe me, he's going to lose this fight. Crowd now chanting, sweet pea, sweet pea, sweet pea. And Purnell has gone to the power game. Landed 27 of 38 power punches in round number five. Many of them to the body. But if Diaz has a broken rib, it hasn't affected his winking. He was winking at people at ringside between rounds. Believe me, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I would prescribe. 
Hold on. Now, George. Boy, Whitaker's a puncher after all. When Vernell goes to the body, Poli stops punching. Just can no longer take it. Diaz waves hello to the crowd and then steps in to pound Whitaker on the top of the head with the left hand. Whitaker allowed him to get a second win. You can believe Diaz has put on a better show than people would have thought he would. A champion. Well, I got to tell you, after we left poolside yesterday, there were plenty of people in our group who thought he might have a chance to win the fight, just based on the confidence he showed in that conversation. And you've seen that cockiness in the ring tonight. What a shot by Diaz, a right to the body and a right to the head. What a almost went down. I don't think I've ever seen Purnell take this many hard punches in a fight. I got it, I got it, hold it, hold it, stop, stop, And it's stop, only stop, because stop, stop. he wants to beat a puncher tonight. It's not moving his head left and right, he's just coming in, head straight up. Well, he wasn't landing the jab at all, so he had to go to some other plan. The left hand drives Diaz back into the ropes. Whitaker looks very calm now. Much more collected than he did two rounds ago. He hits him with a good right hand and then he lets him get away. Beginning to clock break, Diaz break, break, with the break, left break, hand break, over the back, top. Take your step back. Another right hand. Throw, throw, throws that right hand like one of those baseball pitchers. It winds up. Well, it's entirely a counter shot. He waits for you to commit on the left side and then he brings it at you. Correct. You have to give this man credit. His first instinct when he gets hit is to hit the other guy back. That's what champions are made of. Pretty, pretty. Well, the punch that you go, you got to throw him with all your might. This guy is I'm recuperating. Great deep, real deep. Hold those hands up and keep them in front of him, but watch him, okay? But his hands got to be up, okay? Second time, stay there, Pete. Stay there, Pete. Go on back, go on back, go on back. Whitaker threw 71 punches in the last round. Let's see if he can be as busy again in stanza number seven. The airs only get hits when he gets lazy and he stops and wonder what's going on. Hand over the top. More and more Whitaker is able to initiate the action. And less and less does Diaz answer back. Never seen it quite like that. A slow-moving, measured, power-punching Pernell Whitaker. Flat-footed, stalking Poli Diaz, and clearly, at this point, looking for a knockout opportunity. This is a whole new Pernell. Break, step back, that's it. 
Seem to have lost his footwork, but believe me, he's got a power to take care of himself. Well, but can he finish, George? No, 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 no. He's looking for one shot knockout. It's seldom happened in that weight class. That hurt. A puncher like Chavez has finished opponents at this stage in fight down here in this weight class, but not Purnell. Boy, Whitaker was hurt with a straight right hand. Yeah, but Diaz looks to me to have run out of gas a little bit. There's no doubt. The body punching. Taking a toll. that Al Rothenberg is urging to move back. Whitaker chasing Diaz into the corner. And Rothenberg calls it a knockdown. Second knockdown of the fight for Pernell Whitaker. That was a knockdown. And that was a knockdown produced by Whitaker's increasing dominance as he simply swarmed the opponent to the floor. You gotta go up. You gotta, you gotta go out throwing punches. You gotta go out throwing punches. No, 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 This is not a sweet pea that's been seen here before in Norfolk or almost anywhere else. Well, if he can finish, they're going to love it. You know, as we've said before, when a, when a boxer starts to slow down a little bit, that's when he has his most interesting and dramatic fights. He's going to pull a rabbit out of the hat tonight. You know, George, he's never had a knockout past the sixth round in his whole career. It's a hard thing for most fighters to do. He has running a little bit now. Rennell content to stalk and measure. If ever there was a time to run, this is the time to run. Well, Paulie Diaz's quickness is gone, though, George. You saw him paw those two bunches. No longer are they lightning deliveries as they were in the first three rounds. He's tasted the power of Pernell Whitaker now. He doesn't want any more of that. Surprising powers. You saw the left hand solid on the chin. Diaz begins to run again. This is running and not boxing, and a referee can penalize a fighter for doing this. This is quite a compliment to Pernell Whitaker. <laughs> what Diaz is saying with that is that for the moment he wants no part of Sweet Pea, and there's the reason why. Like my mama used to tell me, son, it's better they say there he went than there he lay. Well, he got in a right-hand shot there. A good counter. And Brunel gets a shot. Traps Diaz against the ropes and pounds him twice to the body. Al Rothenberg says, don't hit and hold. Brunel comes back to the body, and Diaz may not have much left. That's a lot of leather. Don't 
Body punches are really killing this guy. The cocky expression is gone from the face of Foley Diaz. He looks worried and troubled. Maybe he's been in this predicament before, though. Watch it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Get down on your knee. Knock it. Knock that shit, Pete. Get down on your knee. The old on your one knee trick. Beautiful counter punching by step, Whitaker step back, as he right. comes back, straight step up back. the middle against the wide winging shots of Diaz and landed a left and a right. And now some of the old footwork Cut. begins to come back That's as he cuts off going. the ring. Harold Letterman, your scorecard through eight rounds. Well, Chip. As we can see, I've got 10 rounds, uh, six rounds to two, 78 to 72, a commanding six point lead for Preno Whitaker. That's how the truth, guys. I haven't, I haven't seen uh, Poli Diaz do much since the third round. It's been all Pernell. He's landing the clean, the hardest shots. He's virtually chasing Poli Diaz out of the ring. The only thing I can't understand is when Poli Diaz circles to his right, I can't see why Pernell doesn't nail him with a, with a left hand. Because Pernell's a side You put him in overdrive. You got this shit. I got to stop. Right? All right, guys, got nothing left. Second up. Seconds up. Seconds up. Come on, we got to go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. You know, as in all. With all fighters of Lou Duva and George Benton, there really is a wonderful uh, sense of synchronization and cooperation between them on exactly what the next move is to maintain the fighter's poise and give him something to do. Diaz no longer respects the power of Pernell Whitaker now. Yeah, he's just taking it. But I believe he can win this fight. He's the knockout. You still believe Diaz can win I the fight? I think so. He How? He's going to throw and catch this guy sleeping, walk, walking in, sleepwalking, and tag him with a straight right well, hand. Well, he's landed some solid rights, and Fernell is still there staring him in the face. That was a good right. All right, we'll see. It's going to be by surprise when he catches him sleepwalking. <laughs> right hand inside landed by the ice. And it was hurt. Whitaker stopped in his track, yeah. He's going to catch him sleepwalking. Uh, he, he's got to remember a good footwork by Whitaker. So you're saying Whitaker looks a little too confident for your taste right That's now? That's right. He's fighting a real champion. This guy's a European uh, uh, lightweight champion. And again, Diaz lands a counter right. Three most significant blows he's landed in the last three rounds. Great left hand by Whitaker. Got through the defense. Diaz in the films I saw of him earlier, he likes to stand there and wait for you to make mistakes. Whitaker going back to the flat-footed motion of the early rounds for a moment. Whitaker could be playing with a cobra. But the right side of Diaz is so is in such bad damage. I I don't understand. Crowd chanting, Sweet P, Sweet P. And now upstairs they come back with Foley, Foley. And he lands a looping left. There's not much snap behind him. Believe me, it's like playing with a snake and walk right into a good right hand, Whitaker. Two solid blows, but the referee wants to say that one was a slip. Almost turned into a Hulk Hogan show there. So maybe that evens things up for the early knockdown, which we thought was clearly a slip. 
Respira, respira tranquilo. Respira. Respira, Polilla, te está recuperando, está cogiendo sus lugares. No hay problema, Poli, no hay problema. There's no problems, Poli. Don't throw, don't throw so many questions. You've got to look for those shots. Tienes que buscar ese crochet de derecha. You've got to look for him. Se le está notando muchísimo cuando entra, Poli. Se le está notando mucho. He's taking a lot of shots when he comes in. Y el juego izquierda, Poli. El juego izquierda, el juego izquierda está entrando. Venga. Ya tienes que respirar, está bien, Poli. Let's see, it hit or trip? Trip. He really thought Pernell tripped him. That's why he want to pull his leg. Yeah, I think he tripped himself actually by running over Pernell's stationary leg. Good call. It's very much like the first knockdown. After the first time around, Rothenberg called it a knockdown. There has been one solid, distinctive, and indisputable knockdown in the fight. One other, perhaps, slip called a knockdown, and now the slip is called a slip. Any way you slice it, Diaz has been on the canvas three times. Whitaker doesn't know what he's playing with. Schedule 12. Holy Diaz is used to this. He's been 10 rounds twice and 12 rounds three times in his career. Solid, accurate punching from Brunel Whitaker now, who taunts Diaz with his arms at his side. Like I said, he doesn't know what he's playing with. This guy is a good puncher in the last couple of rounds. Hold it, I got it, hold it, hold it, stop. stop. That's all right, step back. Hold on, step back, Pete. Holy Diaz has never knocked anybody out beyond the 10th round. Bernal Whitaker has never scored a knockout beyond the sixth round. So more and more, it looks as though this will go to the judges. Whitaker seems so intent to get a knockout. Missing over the top with the right hand. That left the right side of What's that? Go ahead. the right side of Diaz is hurt so bad. He's afraid to commit himself with that right hand. He's being reluctant because he doesn't want to get himself hurt. There he swings the right, and Brunel digs to the body underneath him. Right hand misses by Diaz. Whitaker lands the left again. Crowd responds enthusiastically. Round 10 coming to a close. Diaz is trying to charm him. Diaz has gone back to holding the right hand very close to his rib cage. Once that punch was landed low, he hasn't, he hasn't overcome yet. Watch Whitaker. Whitaker has done a really fine job in this fight of maintaining his poise in the face of a highly motivated, well-conditioned, tough guy, awkward guy, until he could 
seize the control of the fight. In the last round, he was it was looking like he was going to start to play now that he had uh, uh, captured the the uh, momentum of the fight. Georgie Benton right made him settle down in the corner, said, be a professional. None of that wise guy stuff. Just go out there and win the fight. George Benton, trainer of the year in the eyes of the United States boxing, boxing writers. And you saw the punch stat numbers that showed that the jab, which utterly deserted Purnell in the early parts of the bout, is now back with a vengeance. He landed 37 jabs in that last round. Get up, boy. Woodick has developed into a great puncher. No longer master footwork. Well, he doesn't look powerful at all, George. I got it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Diaz Don't digging it. desperately at Whitaker as he tries to muscle him around the ring. He's done a fine job. Hadn't been put up. So real. Diaz to the center of the ring says come with me Holy tries to chase him down and now Diaz is grinning momentarily and Purnell begins to jab the grin away he's hurt Purnell Whitaker was hurt a oh, straight right hand I don't think kind Holy knows it I don't think Diaz knows it George. it was kind of straight when you put it like that <laughs> it's interesting Whitaker looked into the corner with a kind of Bashful look on his face as if to say to Georgie Ben, you were right, I shouldn't fool around, I should take care of business. Because while he was fooling it. around, he got nailed. Watch your heads, watch your heads. This fight goes to the judges, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, but they're Norfolk, Virginia judges, George. Then you know what's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> of course you know what's going to happen. Well, even the judges can't get this one wrong. <laughs> a good fighter takes it out of the hands of the judges, and Whitaker has done that here. I think it's a tremendously impressive performance for Whitaker by virtue of exactly what you said, Larry. He was in trouble tactically early, and he found a way to turn that around. But Diaz and my book won six of those first rounds. Hey, anything could happen. I got it. I got it. But my book is not a very good book. You <laughs> Your book is still learning, George. Three minutes to go. This is the last round. This is the last round for you. You gotta give it all. Your life, this is it. And if you can make him pay, you make him pay. But don't get here for no crazy nothing. Okay. Last round, baby. Hold those hands up high. That's all you have to do. Stay inside. Right? Okay. Because the guy has nothing inside. See, but on outside, he's going to let you Okay, you've already recuperated now. Come on. Harold Letterman, how do you have the fight as we go into the 12th round? In case you didn't hear Harold above the noise of this crowd, he said he has the fight nine rounds to two for oh, Whitaker. Watch your hands, watch your hands. The judges are from Norfolk, Virginia. The crowd is from Norfolk, Virginia. Fernell Whitaker is from Norfolk, Virginia. Everything is against Poli Diaz now with fewer than three minutes to go. In Las Vegas, if this fight had occurred, Diaz winning the first six round and pull this one out to easily win this thing. You know, Paulie Diaz has said that he wanted all his life to fight in America. He trained four years for this fight. He's left nothing back in Spain. And he's just butted Pernell Whitaker above the left eye. He cannot stop and get himself rest because he's been butted. Watch your head. And Rafael Rothenberg says, go ahead. You hear me? And Whitaker. 
Walker oh, pushed Rothenberg, and Rothenberg oh, doesn't like go. it. And they settle matters, and Diaz oh, got a long rest. I got it. Stop and let's see what he can come Watch on with head. now. Watch your head, man. Knock that shit off. Whitaker better pay attention to what he's doing. This is a boxing match. Diaz is... Oh, this is wild. Diaz's corner told him to do anything he has to do, and obviously on, he took them at their word. Must be the way they do it in Spain. Come on, Pete, watch yourself. Solid right hand from Diaz. And Whitaker is hurt. He's hurt. I got He's it. holding it. He's still woozy from the right hand. Now he's yelling at George Benton that he's okay. His corner should leave him alone. Benton is screaming at him to keep his hands up. This Seems to be more worried about his corner than the other opponent. Whitaker has big trouble over his left eye as a result of the bus. Hey, he was saved by the referee that time. No longer a boxing match, it's a war. No, Diaz is trying to turn it into a bullfight. That's right. I got it, I got it! Stop your head! Stop your head, come on. Brunel's gonna make it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I was about to say, Paul Diaz didn't leave anything back in Spain. He left it all here in this ring. I give him the highest marks doing the best he could against a really, really good fighter. I agree. And despite whatever you may want to say about lost speed or lost footwork in the end, it was another tribute to the technicianship, the skill, and the ring management capability of Brunel Whitaker. He turned the fight around. He better be careful. He may get hit Diaz with a candy bar now. your scorecard for the fight. Jim, 117, 109, nine rounds to three, Pernell Whitaker. Pernell Whitaker won easy. I mean, absolutely no question about it. I, I think that uh, there's no way he can lose this fight. You know, uh, in the very last round, uh, Pauly Diaz tried to butt him to try to get even, but it's all Pernell Whitaker. As you said, he just uh, outbanged him. Too much of a ring general. George, you think Whitaker's gonna get the decision? I'm afraid if it had been judges elsewhere, Diaz could win this boxing match. All right, let's take a look at the butt. And we mentioned that Diaz was told by his cornerman to do anything and everything he could. And he took advantage of an opportunity to pop Purnell, and that hurts, George. That really hurt. And unfortunate for Diaz, not good sportsmanship. And we're waiting to see if Michael Buffer is ready with the official decision. I don't believe that's the case. So right now, while officials here scurry to try to gather scorecards and bring together the result of the fight, you see Poli Diaz okay, still playing you, to the crowd and getting mixed cheers and boos. Probably he won the support of a few here tonight with his wild, unorthodox, and unusual attack. And Pernell Whitaker, who no doubt had some nervous moments and gave his corner some nervous moments, particularly in the early rounds, squints and tries to get the buzzing pain above his left eye to go away. As he waits to hear, and now for the first time, the two fighters show a moment of mutual respect. They met in Spain last year when Whitaker fought there in Madrid, and they didn't like each other then. Whitaker threw 582 punches according to HBO punch stat statistics in the bout, landed 304. His accuracy increased consistently from round one through round 12. And you saw the numbers for Poli Diaz. There is a Virginia Commonwealth boxing official in the middle of the ring with a cellular phone. I don't know if the judges have left the arena or not. Bring him over here. Over here. 
Well, do you care to hazard a guess as to why this is taking so long? WBA doesn't speak very good English, and he may be having difficulty interpreting the scores with Doug Beavis, the Virginia Commissioner. The supervisor from the WBA. Yes. He'll be the one collecting the scorecards. You see referee Al Rothenberg waiting, and now I think Michael Buffer's ready with the official decision in the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Sheila Hammond Martin scores about 120 to 107. Viva Exton scores about 119 to 107. And Julio Roldan scores at 119 to 108. For the winner by unanimous decision and still undisputed lightweight champion of the world for now, Sweet Pea Whitaker. So, Pernell Whitaker, who according to our figuring landed 65 to 70 percent of his punches in the late rounds, comes up with a unanimous decision and by the numbers on those scorecards, a near whitewash over Poli Diaz. And we go to Larry Merchant with Sweet Pea. Okay, Pernell Whitaker. That was not a Pernell Whitaker kind of fight. He turned that into an alley fight and forced you to fight his fight, at least for the first half of it. Well, well Larry, that's the gang. That's that's why we I have a great staff, great organization. We went in there, we just wanted to punish him. We didn't I didn't want to knock him out, knock him down or anything. I did exactly what I wanted to do. I punished him. He came in my town, he disrespected everybody, and we punished him for 12 rounds. We've talked about moving up to the 140 pound class. What are your plans? My plans right now are to go on vacation with my boys. In the ring. In, in the, the ring. ring. <laughs> well, in the ring, it's no, no plans at all. I guess we're looking towards Piaz or whatever. But uh, in the future, the near future, I will be moving up to a much stronger, I'll be much stronger. But I'm, I'm very strong and physical right now. And you, say, you can tell it in the ring. I just didn't want to get careless. He's a swinger, he's a professional, and he was number one contender. I'm very pleased. I couldn't have done any better. Thank you very much. Let's go back to ringside with Jim and George. All right, Larry, thanks very much. Pernell Whitaker, unanimous decision winner. And George, we heard Pernell there talking about his future. One more likely fight at 135 pounds against Jorge Paez sometime in the fall. And then Purnell, for his part, is expecting to move on up to 140 pounds. Now, he pounded away at this guy for the last six or seven rounds of the bout and couldn't finish him. Can he punch well enough to go up five pounds in weight? He's got the power, no doubt about it. If power is going to do it, he's standing flat foot enough to punch. And he could knock out a bigger guy. If this guy had not been moving so much, he would have had a knockout tonight. He's moving on toward 28 years old, toward what would have to be the prime and maybe beyond that just a little bit the latter stages of his boxing career. Could he learn to be a flat-footed knockout puncher as that speed and maneuverability that made him so great goes away? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, the great Sugar Ray Robinson, of course, even the great Sugar Ray Leonard, these guys moved up with power. They stood a little closer to the ground. They had a little more confidence in that punch. He can become a middleweight, even a middleweight champion if he gets a little older, maybe 35. You know, in June we had a good time in Palm Springs, California, and what a scene this was tonight, huh? This we don't always have to be in Vegas or Atlantic City for I'm boxing. I'm telling you, this is the best fight of all. You, th you loved it, huh? Uh, I enjoyed that one. Great. We had a great time, too. Larry Merchant, your closing comments on Michael Moore's victory, Pernell Whitaker's victory, and a tremendously exciting evening of boxing here in Norfolk, Virginia. I have two, I have two thoughts. Uh, one is, is that boxers like Pernell Whitaker seldom inspire a national... Personalities like a Muhammad Ali and a Ray Leonard. What they can inspire is an ethnic following or a regional following. And we saw here that Pernell Whitaker did an excellent job, and I think part of it had to do with the fact that he was right here in his hometown and inspired by this crowd and wanting to do his best because he could have had a, his hands fuller than they were if, if he wasn't ready to do battle. The second thing about Michael Moore, there's, there's the oddest story about Michael Moore. He has one of the most unusual rituals I've ever heard of. He lives in a lovely home, but when he goes into training for a fight, he goes into Manuel Stewart's home, goes down in the cellar, into a 
small seven by nine foot cubicle with a bed and a small television and stays there until they're ready to go to the fight. Weeks, months, no matter how long it is. 